Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called The Oldest Man in the World. It was bitter cold up there in the uplands, the foothills of the Pyrenees, 20,000 years ago. The great sheet of glacial ice had slid down from the polar ice cap. Only the mountain peaks arose above it. There were reindeer in southern France. Reindeer and the great shaggy bison. The long-haired ancestor of the horse lived somehow on those dead hills in the bitter cold of 200 centuries ago. No man wrote down the time when the sullen glaciers let go their icy hold on the countryside. For there were no men to see it. Only the fierce great bears roaming the barren, frigid hills, preying horribly on the reindeer and the bison and the gentle, frightened horses. Where the men came from, nobody knows. Perhaps they struggled up from the Spanish peninsula over the jagged passes of the Pyrenees, following the retreating wall of ice. Perhaps they... But it's fruitless to speculate. The ice melted away to the north, and the earth appeared... And there were men living in the high caves of the Pyrenees. In the Cro-Magnon caves along the Dordogne in France, they found what they said was indisputable evidence of prehistoric man. That intelligent, walking upright man who made weapons, fought, worshipped, and died. The Cro-Magnon man. You've seen the drawings they made of him. A beetle-browed, heavy-jawed, cave man. A short step on the ladder of evolution above his anthropoid forebears. And in certain caves hidden away in the foothills of the Pyrenees, you can find drawings that the Cro-Magnon man scratched on the cave walls 20,000 years ago. So he did live and flourish and finally perished. And they say he vanished utterly. That is what they say. Now I'll tell you what I know. Why, I think I ought to tell Lucas. I know the story even better. Did you hear that? Did you hear a voice speaking to you? I thought I heard a voice. I thought I heard Harry's voice. Listen. Listen. Couldn't be Harry's voice, could it? Not Harry's voice. Harry is. Harry's dead. Harry. And the last time I saw Harry alive was 27 years ago this coming August. Listen. It, it can't be. I wonder if Harry's bicycle is still up there beneath a clump of bushes. They'd be trees now. Up there at the mouth of the cave on the road. The lonesome road that leads past the ruins of the castle of Mudspan. The frame will be rusty and the tires will be in shreds and the shiny leather will be weather-worn and mildewed. If some village boy from Mudspan didn't find the bicycle and ride it away many years ago. But I doubt anybody found it. Nobody found the mouth of that cave. Not for 20,000 years. We left our bicycles at the mouth of the cave. Harry and Lucille and I. We can sit here in the cave until the storm's over. Long ride down to the village and I don't want to get caught in one of these young floods. Can't even find a road when it starts to rain. Uh, pull your bike inside, Lucille. It'll start raining any second. We made it just in time, it looks like. It's down, Lucas. Here, Lucille. Yeah, one cigarette. Here. Here. Thanks. 
Me. You boys are so polite. No, no, no. Not three from one match, Lucy. Oh, you. I haven't got any matches. Here. Thanks. Lightning. Practically never strikes game. Oh, sit closer to me. Ah. Cold, Lucille? I don't like lightning. There comes the rain. Let's get farther inside. It's coming right in here. It's probably damp in there, too. No, it's nice and dry. Dark, though. Come on, Lucas. Blowing right in there. I'll say it is. Where are you, Lucille? Here. Dry leaf. Oh, fine. Sit down. Sit down, Lucas. Not on me. I can't see you. Oh. <sighs> this is all right. Comfortable, Lucille? Fine. Listen to it rain. Nice and cozy in here. Yeah, no wonder they lived in caves. Who? Who? Cavemen. Cro-Magnon men. Suppose any of them lived in here? Big cave. Seems big, anyway. Well, probably they did. Lived in all the caves around here. Remember what the Abbey told us down the village? Sure, they find relics everywhere. They lived here all right. Nobody home now, though. <laughs> Hardly. And yeah, that was 20,000 years ago. Pass you dare, Charlie? <laughs> oh, hoo, hoo. Yeah, they lived in all the caves around here. They must have lived here. They've explored all the caves from here to Toulouse. This one's kind of hidden, though. We just found it by accident. A good accident. Well, we'd be out in that. Sure coming down. I'm hungry. It'll stop pretty soon. I hope so. If this keeps up, that road will be something. Road? Goat path. Well, you're dry. Now. Where are you going, Lucille? Exploring. Find a caveman. What's the matter with me? You're too gentle. I can get rough. Don't go far, Lucille. Break your leg in the dark back there. Yeah, and I don't want to have to carry you down that mountainside in the mud. I've got my flashlight. Well, be careful. You got another cigarette? Hmm. Yeah, match. you got nothing but the habit, Lucas. Thanks. Here it goes away. Well, be careful. Oh, shut up. My bride. Yeah, I wonder if this cave really has been explored. I wouldn't know. It'd be nice to find a souvenir and take home with us. What kind of souvenir? Bone or something? With some caveman's name carved on it. Property of Ugg, son of Gug. Yeah, they carve things on bones. Mm. Carve pictures on the walls of the caves. How are you going to pry the wall off a cave? Lucille. Lucille. Hey, Lucille. I'm all right. Hey, there's bats in here. What'd you expect? Robins? Ostriches. I wouldn't wander around back there, Lucille. I'm all right. Well, be careful. Shut up. Come back here. In a minute. Hey, there's a big hole back here. Well, stay away from it. I Stopped raining yet? Yeah, it's coming down harder than ever. It's getting dark out, though. No. We're dry. None of um, that brandy left, is there? I heard that. Well, there ain't any. Drink it up. I don't want any. We should come back here. In a minute. Hey, this is wonderful back here. Well, come on back here. Come back before you get lost. All right. See any pictures back there? Uh, it's like the Louvre, dearie. The what? The Louvre. Where the pictures are? In Paris. France. Oh. No, on the walls. No. No pictures. Well, you better come back. Well, you ought to see this hole in the floor. You stay away from it. There. Water outside, too. Well, let me see. Come back here now. Stop fooling around. You'll break your... No, I won't. You will, too. You... What's the matter? You... Lucille. 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 Come back here. What's the matter with you? What is it? What... Come back here, quick. Come on, Lucas. Uh, wait, I'll get my flashlight. Lucille, now stand still. Look out for that hole, Harry. Look out. This 
way. Uh, what happened? What is it? You're both scared to death. What happened? Look! What? A footprint. A caveman's footprint. Well, let's see. And the solid rock. How, how did it get there? Yeah. A caveman put it there. Twenty thousand years ago. In the solid rock? Well, that was soft mud twenty thousand years ago. And a man, a beetle browed, heavy jawed, cro manion man, left it there in the soft limestone mud. And the mud has hardened through all those two hundred times a hundred years, and it's. It looks as if he just walked away from it. And the man that made it, he's not even a dead man anymore. He, he died. He was a skeleton somewhere in here in the bowels of the earth. The centuries went on and on. He's. Well, he's not even dust. The man that made that footprint. It scares me. You don't need to be afraid of him, Lucille. Listen. Thunder, that's all. Hold my hand, Harry. I'm scared all of a sudden. There's nothing to be afraid of. Harry. I know there's nothing to be afraid of, Lucas, but... <laughs> but... Let's get out of here. I'm scared. Come on, dear. Uh, let's go back where we were and, and not wander around till the rain stops. Uh, over this way, Harry. <laughs> he fell. That hole in the floor. Lucille! You pushed him! I saw you push him! You murdered him! Well, I pushed him. His eyes were on the footprint on the yellow limestone floor of the cave as he took a backward step directly toward the yawning hole that led to... and I pushed him into... just the... Lightest touch on his arm, just enough to take his balance away from him on that glaze of ancient crystalline limestone. Just the lightest push. And Lucille saw it. Of course. Lucille had promised to marry me. That was before Harry's time. Lucille loved me. That was before Harry's time. I loved Lucille. Before Harry's time and after Harry's time and always. But she married Harry. They asked me to come along to the south of France with them. The old good friend, the friend of the family, the man who loved and lost and forgave and wrapped up his broken heart. Lucas the unjealous. Lucas the good loser, the good fellow, good old Lucas. And at last the storm sent opportunity deep in the cave where the oldest man in the world had lived. He would forget the man who died of an accident in that ancient place. And in time, the good friend would take up his role as the lover. The role he had never forgotten. Him. But Lucille saw what I did. I remember the thoughts that raced through my mind as we stood beside that pit there in the brief lights from our paltry flashlights. I'll have to do something. I'll have to try it. I have to make it look as if I was only trying to save him from falling. He's dead down there. He hit his head on the rocks as he fell, or he's drowned in those black waters down there. I have to do something to convince her. Look. Look there at the side of the pit. Why, a man could climb down there. I would only have to climb part way down to make it look good. To make it look as if I really wanted to rescue him. It'll be a great act. I won't fall. I'll make it look good. She'll be sure I was trying to save him if I climbed down after him. And he's dead anyway. Harry, I saw him do it. I saw the murderer. I saw him do it. I saw him Lucille, you're being absurd. Lucille, listen to me. You know perfectly well I didn't push Harry. You know I didn't, Lucille. I reached out as I saw his foot slipping on the floor there, and I tried to save him from falling, but I didn't push him. You see, you know I didn't push him. Why, Harry's my best friend, you see. Why should I try to kill him? Why, I love you. And I love Harry like a brother, you see. I didn't push him. I tried to save his life. Listen, Lucille. Listen. 
Stop crying a second. I'm going down there. There, see where it looks as if the steps, steps the old caveman made themselves so long ago. Now you stay right here, Lucille, and I'll go down and I'll do everything I can to bring Harry back to you. No, now stay there and wait. Wait, Lucille, wait. I, I can climb down. And... No, no, I don't want you to do it. Let me go, Lucille. Oh, no. I know you want to make sure he's dead when you go down there. No, no, you want to make sure he's dead. Oh, no, Lucille. Well, you see, I thought that's fine. I hadn't thought of that. He might be still alive down there, but well, he won't be, Lucille, darling, when I come back. I well, thank you very much for the suggestion, I thought. That solves the whole problem very neatly. And now down the slippery steps, cut into the limestone. Down, oh, so carefully in the dark. The little gurgling sound of dark waters below me. But slip, be careful, mustn't fall yourself, Lucas. And up above the dim beam from Lucille's flashlight. Was very, very neat as I climbed down. Harry, old boy, are you all right? Harry, Harry, old boy. Maybe he is dead. Maybe he did drown. Now, how much farther is it? The rocks are slippery. And I see water left suddenly at my foot. Harry. Now my own flashlight to see down here. A head bobbing on the surface of the water. Harry! No. And beam sweeps back and forth over the swirling dark icy waters. Harry! This wall. The far wall. To the right. To the left. Harry. Harry. I, I don't see him, Lucille. Harry. He, he's not down here. Lucas. I heard. Lucas. Is that you, Harry? Where? Lucas. Where are you? Harry. Harry. I hear you. I... Are you all right? Certainly I'm all right. Jump down into the water. What? Where are you? I... The water isn't deep. Jump down. Well, listen, I don't... Jump down. I think my arm's broken. Come on, hurry. Well, I... I... Come on, quick. <laughs> Where are you? Feel around the side. Water's only up to your chest. Feel around the side. The tunnel. Panicky in the wet darkness, feeling around the slimy walls. Water lapping soggily at my chest. Keep feeling around. Go find it. I can't help Suddenly, you. an opening. The water sucking hungrily up my legs, a suffocating water filled tunnel. The rocky roof from six inches above my head. Water over my boat. Flies. Blinding curve, flashy arms. Water, darkness, the precious gulp of air. Don't find it. Only a second ago. All right. Harry. You're all right. I don't... Uh, it's what? a tunnel that comes out of that hole I fell into. <clears throat> Underground river or something. Kind of a beach here. Lie still. You're all right. Are you... I think I broke my arm when I fell. I tried to get back through the tunnel, but the current's too strong. You'll have to help me, Lucas. Wait. Matty. Not scared, are you? Well, this is another cave. Not afraid of the cave, ma'am, are you? Where, where are you? Right here. It's so dark, can't see a thing. <coughs> Try your flashlight, unless it's got water logged. All right, does work. Stalactites. 
hundred feet long, hanging dismally from a ceiling so far away. The silent, rushing underground river and a shore of yellow crystallized limestone. Beside me, a wall deep scratched with giant drawings that I recognize in the feeble light as the great shaggy bison of the Ice Age. Rude drawings in red and black of the gentle little horses that roamed the countryside above me one day. A rude altar. And ancient, terrifying marks scratched into the solid rock in the days when it was soft mud. Marks that the cavemen's high priests must have made there in their holy of holies in the ancient cave. Beside me, the incredibly old statue of the great ice bear looming horribly in the little light. The marks of the ritual stone spears clear in its hulking sides after 20,000 years. Look. The squat, menacing figure of, a, of an almost man. Beetle-browed, heavy-browed, heavy-jawed, glaring horribly at me over Harry's shoulder. <laughs> he, he won't hurt you, Lucas. He's a statue, too. Now, you know, don't you, what the oldest man in the world looked like? He, he, nobody's ever seen anything like that, Harry. Better save that light. We'll need it if we're going to get out of here to tell anybody about it. No, no, it's all right. This is a fresh battery. Harry, it's incredible. Look at his face. Solid limestone. Scare you, old boy? Come on, I want to get out of here. Can we... Oh, wait, Harry, I want to... I want to get Listen. up. That's the sound of the water. The river there. I thought I heard... The sound of the water. Back there in the shadow. Nothing. There is too something back there. <laughs> the cavemen? The Cro-Magnon men? Alive after 20,000 years, Lucas? There's something. I can hear... Whatever it is, old man... Harry. What? You said you broke your arm. I said so. I said I couldn't get back through the passage with a broken arm, didn't I? Well, that's what you... A man couldn't get back there with a broken arm. Well, why? Because I wanted you in here with me, Lucas. I wanted you in here with whatever else is in here. Harry. You're the smart guy. You're the investigator. You're the man that knows all about the cavemen. You're the... What? The murderer, Lucas. Hi. I saw your face when you pushed me, murderer. So? No. No, wait. Goodbye, Lucas. You're not going to leave me. I, I can get through that passage just as well as you can. Not you... with a broken arm, Lucas. Not with two broken arms. You're not... Hold out your arms, Lucas. No. No, you... <laughs> Now, look what you've done, Lucas. You've smashed the oldest statue in the world of bits. Not content with attempted murder, you... I didn't... Hold out your arms, Lucas, and let's get this, this over. Drop that rock. Harry! Harry! I told you... I... I made my way back through the passage. How, I'll never know, but I made it. I made the climb up the slippery limestone walls of that dreadful pit up to the floor of the cave. I don't know how I did that. I stood for a long moment alongside Lucille when I came up to the cave floor. And I remember how the yellow floor glittered in what was left of the light from her dying flashlight. Lucille, I said. Lucille, I loved you. And I wanted you. And I loved you enough to try to murder Harry. And if I let you go, Lucille, you'll tell everybody and they'll take me and they'll hang me. And it's no good, Lucille. Harry. Is he? Is he? Yes, Lucille. Harry is dead. Harry is dead. You murdered him. No, Lucille. No, I didn't murder him. I tell you, I didn't murder him. But he's dead. Yes. He's dead, but I didn't murder. Then... 
I don't want to live any longer. Either. Yes, I know, Lucille. But I didn't murder Harry. I tried, but I didn't do it. Murder. And I picked her up. And just as gently as I could, I dropped her over the edge of the yawning black pit. Down into the water down there. And before I loosened my hands and let her fall, I leaned over her. And I kissed her on the forehead because I did love her. They'd have hanged me. She wouldn't have believed me. Nobody in the world would have believed that thing that came out of the shadows behind Harry down there and lifted up a great jagged piece of the broken statue and smashed his head in. Nobody in the world would have believed me if I'd told them that Harry was killed by a real, live, breathing caveman. The last of the beetle-browed, heavy-jawed, squatty little men that lived 20,000 years ago. But that's what happened. was Harry. Nancy Sheridan was Lucille. As usual, music for Quiet Please is played by Albert Berman. Our sound effects by William J. McClintock. Now for a word about next week, our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Thank you for listening to Quiet Please. Next week, since so many of our listeners have requested it, I'm going to give you my Memorial Day story in the house where I was born. And so until next week at the same time, I am proudly yours, Ernest Chappell. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.